Welcome back. Today we're going to do a quick one on Soundpeat's latest wireless set. This is the Capsule 3 Pro Plus. This is the previous Capsule 3 Pro next to it, and I just wanted to show them side by side. You can kind of see the box size actually changed, but the case and the actual shells themselves and the design, that really hasn't changed. These are very, very similar looking, if not the same design. They are very, very close. So not Physically, not a whole lot changed. Um, on the insides, this one, the previous model had LDAC. It had a 12 millimeter dynamic driver. It had adaptive ANC. Those, func those functions actually carried over into the Pro Plus, and the Pro Plus added the XMEMS MEMS driver. So that is actually what is the major new thing with the Pro Plus versus the original Pro. But we'll move this one off to the side so we can focus in on the Pro Plus and talk about what is new here. So as I said, what is functionally or physically, this is pretty much the same design that they've used on the Capsule 3. The Pro Plus is you know, essentially the same. I think it actually has the same microphones and the same setup. I think everything is pretty much the same. So physically, what goes in your ear, that will feel very, very similar to the um, previous Pro. The, on the inside, what is new and why you would purchase the Pro Plus, XMEMS, the cowl version of their MEMS driver. So you're getting better sound quality, all the features from the previous one, like I said, and you're getting it at the same reasonable price. So it, it's technically a pretty much a straight up upgrade. You're getting a very much upgraded sound on the newer one. Same functions. I don't think anything really was lost other than battery life, which we'll talk about in a second, but this one is a much better sound quality than the original one and the price. I don't remember what the original price on this one was, but this one's going to land somewhere in the $50 to $60 um, US dollar range. So I'm not sure what the final price is going to be. I think it was going to be closer to 50 than 60, but it'll be in that ballpark. So spec wise, like I said, this one still retains the 12 millimeter dynamic driver. It added the XMEMS Cowl MEMS driver. It still has LDAC. It still has adaptive ANC, the transparency mode still does multi-point, still has game mode. Battery life, like I said, this one does about six and a half hours. I think this one was about eight hours. This one is going to do about five hours on ANC. I don't remember what this one did on ANC, but it was probably a bit more. And then when you combine ANC and LDAC, it's going to be a little bit lower than five as well. So you are taking a little bit of a battery hit on the Pro Plus. If that is your main main concern, then you're probably going to stick with a Pro. But, you know, I think that is going to be the trade-off on this first implementation of the MEMS driver. You're going to hit... Um, take a little bit of a loss on the battery life. It still uses the Pete's Audio app, and you're still going to get the same Sound Pete's Classic presets and the Rock and the Pop and the EQ. All of that is still available in the app, just like you would on any other Sound Pete set. So the adaptive ANC on this, and, and I would say the same thing on, on both of these models. The, the adaptive ANC is still pretty good. This design, whether it's this design or this design, it's still not the most passive isolating design. So you do get a lot of environmental noise that just kind of leaks through because of um, how these tend to not isolate as much in your ear as some other designs as a full in-ear does. So you're still going to get some of that bleeding through. You're still going to get adaptive A and C, which is listening to how much is bleeding through and using the external microphones to figure out how much noise is actually coming through from the outside and trying to, um, they call it adaptive A and C. So it's always trying to adjust the, the level of A and C depending on what's coming through and what has actually leaked through. So pretty cool. It's a very smart system. And then this one is sort of no different than the previous ones. You turn it on and it listens for a couple seconds and it tries to figure out exactly what noise is coming from the outside, picking a level of ANC in it, and that's how it works. And it, and it keeps on monitoring it. So very smart, very cool. But again, like I said, if that is your main concern, this design where you're kind of half in ear, that won't be the most isolating one. You're still going to get a little bit of noise through. It's it's somewhere between transparency and no transparency. You're getting quite a bit. Like I tend to mow my lawn with these. And this isn't the quietest version of lawn mowing because of the just simply the design. But, you know, I, I would say the same exact thing on this one. I think their their version of adaptive ANC tends to sound similar in this design. The the better one is the, the more of the earbud full in-ear, which actually goes in your ear, and you get more isolation in that way. So sound, yes. Without a doubt, the MEMS driver is noticeable right away. The upper range is very clear, very detailed. 
and slightly bright with the Sound Peak Classics preset. They brought the upper range up, so you so you really can't miss the X Mems and how detailed and clear it is. But yeah, I think right away, I think even for casual listeners, you'll notice that there is a very much a very detailed, a lot of clarity, very sharp, very clear. You know, there is there is a lot of resolution right there in the mids and the treble, and and I think. Even for, as I said, for casual users, I think that will be noticeable over the single dynamic driver in the in the previous models, you know, without a doubt. So would it have been better without the 12 millimeter dynamic driver? So with, with X-MEMS, MEMS drivers, you can do it. They do do bass. They can do it on their own. And maybe perhaps later in the future, they will do one on its own. But I think that was one of the criticisms was, was why are the TWS sets pairing it with a dynamic driver? And, and I'll say that the way they they pulled off the same dynamic driver, the same 12 millimeter in both sets, you get a very similar transition. There was nothing really shocking about hearing this. You're essentially getting a very similar sound profile, almost the same tuning, same bass shelf, same impactful, big bass, big fun bass, but you're just getting paired with a better, clearer, more detailed, more resolution upper range. So, I, so I'm not going to complain about doing the dynamic driver plus the MEMS. I think the transition between the two and to be aligned with the other tunings that Soundbeats has done, I think it was a very natural transition for them to do it that way. And when you listen to it, like I said, it sounds very similar to other Soundbeats sets. It's going to sound just better. But the bass shelf itself is going to be very, very similar to what you got here. So yeah, to be honest, I, I would say it's still a very fun TWS outdoor sound, just better. And the sound is very similar to what exactly what they tried on the Opera 5 series, and that was the Audiophile series. But it's executed much better with the MEMS driver because that is better than both of the balanced armatures that they tried to pull off on Opera 05. But it's, it's the same exact idea, same exact dynamic driver, big bass sound, but then pair it with a better upper range that had more resolution and more detail. That was the goal behind Opera, and it happened to be a bigger shell. But now we're seeing... Same exact shell, similar price point. Opera was actually more expensive. Just a better implementation, better sound quality, but same shells, right? It's actually, I would say it's a better version of what they tried to do with Opera without really changing anything or losing anything. So the bass, and again, like as I said, this is going to be the, the part that is most similar to other Soundpeat sets. And if we look at the graph, you can kind of see that these two are tuned very similar pretty much the same tuning this is capsule 3 pro in the blue and then the pro plus is in the red so pretty much going to be very similar up until the point where i said they pushed the mems forward they pushed the treble a little bit forward so it's sort of unmistakable that you'll not notice it and that's exactly what it sounds like right it's very very similar 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 and then you just hear everything is a little bit brighter a little bit more forward in the upper range you're like oh that's what the the x mems mems driver is going to sound like now i hear more detailed more treble it's a little bit brighter that's exactly how this was pushed out and i think opera pushed it out in the same exact way so i wasn't all that surprised to see the graph do this i think this graph is pretty much typical very typical of what soundbeats does they tend to do a very similar dsp style tuning and then kind of move the levels up and down slightly depending on what what the goal was for that set and this one clearly was to just bring the upper range out a little bit so you really get a full taste of what that MEMS driver can do. And that's sort of exactly what you see on the graph as well. So, but base, the base shelf itself, like I said, 12 millimeter dynamic driver, it's basically the same as what you had here. Very similar DSP base style tuning to all their other sets. Soundpeats tends to use this nice 12 millimeter bio cellulose driver. So you get same driver, same sound, same impactful base shelf. There's not a whole lot different on the base. The mids, and this is where it's more noticeable out of the box that something has changed. You do get those clear, sharp mids, and it's just brightened with a little bit of the treble. But clearly, there was an intention to show the benefits of the MEMS and clarity and detailed in the same way that Opera did it with BAs, like I said. Just a bit too much, and I would say the same thing about Opera. They raised it up a little bit too much with the default preset. So like I said, in the Soundpeats app, you will get the Soundpeats Classic preset. That will be that will sound uh, a little bit brighter to you, or sound a little bit brighter to me anyway. But in the same way we talk about coherence with hybrid drivers, in the same way that Opera did it with a dynamic driver and balanced armatures, this is doing it with the dynamic driver and the MEMS. When we talk about wired sets, we talk about the separation between the two, and you always like to have both 
types of drivers sound very similar in tonality, so they sound almost as one driver. And in this, because they raised the upper range just a little bit, there's just more separation between the dynamic driver and the MEMS than I would probably prefer if, just for listening to music. And I think in that way, it probably shows it off fine, probably better for other things other than music. And I will, I will admit that it does show off the MEMS driver, but as far as sounding more natural for music, it's probably not the best that they elevated it that much. They could have probably used the same exact tuning and, and it would have sounded more natural. So, as I said, you can actually pull up the Pete's app, the Pete's audio app. It does have an EQ. This is exactly what my EQ looked like. So, when I, like I was talking about the transition between the dynamic driver, so this little bit out here, the bass side is going to be the dynamic driver. Up here is going to be the MEMS. And like I said, I brought down the MEMS about minus two in their app. And that's just a level. I don't know if that's 2 dB, whatever it is. Just move the sliders down too, and that will lower that treble level. And you know, not all that surprising. This dropping the red line by about two dB is going to be closer to the original Capsule Three Pro tuning, so that will get rid of some of that extra brightness. And then I just bumped up the little bit of mid bass just so you get a cleaner transition between the sub bass and the mids, just to add a little bit more energy, a little bit more warmth. So the two drivers don't sound as separated as they do in the Soundpeats Classic um, de default. So, you know, like I said, so bring down the treble just a little bit. That'll close the gap a little bit. And then just adding a little bit more energy between the two will close the gap even more. And after doing that, you end up with a very natural sounding, very nice set that will probably compete with lots of wired sets at the same price. So, yeah, the, the MEMS driver is very, very cool. And I, I'm sort of happy and as a hobbyist to actually hear it executed and be available at such a reasonable price that people can actually poke at it. And whether you use the Pete's app EQ or use your own EQ to really play with it and see how good it actually is at resolving in the mids and all the way through the treble. It's very, very good. I, I haven't heard anything like it um, ever, which is no surprise because it's a new driver. But you know, where you mostly are going to hear it is definitely where the mids are sort of sharply detailed and it's sort of noticeable there. The treble is really where you start to hear what MEMS can do and what is typically missing in those $50 to $60 TWS sets. You know, those normal dynamic drivers, even Soundpeats uses nice dynamic drivers, they can't do treble and resolve treble like this set can do it. The resolution and ability to resolve these pristine small details and the decays that you hear are very similar to what you would hear with planar or balanced armature, but executed differently. I think the tonality is slightly different on MEMS. It's hard to really put your finger on exactly what MEMS is doing and why it sounds, because I've only heard one of them, so... Yeah, I will say it's not quite balanced armature. It's not quite planar. It is very detailed and very, very cool to listen to. But, you know, it's kind of hard to relate it to something that you may have heard if you haven't heard it. And that's why I said it's nice that they put this out at an affordable price so people can actually get their ears on it. But I typically wear TWS outside and not used to hearing that much detail outside with TWS. If you EQ and bring the dynamic driver and MEMS closer so it sounds more natural, it will definitely take on some wired sets, like I said. But I do think this is very much an amazing start, and it really shows how tricky it is to blend two vastly different driver types into a, a single unified tonality. And, you know, they basically took their Soundpeats preset classic, adapted it to this driver. But, you know, when you listen to it in ear and match it with EQ to your preferences, it, it'll probably sound better than their preset. And that's, that's exactly what I would say. I think after adjusting an EQ, I would say it's, it's vastly better than how they shipped it with their classic uh, EQ. So that is what I got on the Capsule 3 Pro Plus. So thank you guys again for tuning in, and I will see you next time.